In the section 2.3 lecture videos, we learned how to find midpoints by hand. And then we also learned how to fill out one of these large tables with the relative frequencies and the cumulative frequencies and finding the total by hand. Now the danger with that is that, of course, this is a lot of by hand calculations and it would be easy to make a mistake. It would be much simpler if we could make a computer do it for us. And that's what I'm going to show you in this video. Now, this could very well be a project that's assigned to you by your instructor. So if it is, make sure you follow along and do everything. Um, but if not, this will just be for your own edification, how to make um, find a table like this with a spreadsheet program. Okay, so in my Canvas course, I have a project that's titled Chapter 2, Project 3. Let me close that. And let me click on the link. And then it says the project document is at this link, so I'm going to click on that. And then the spreadsheet document should be at this link, although I just had a mistake where it was the wrong spreadsheet in a different, nope, this is perfect, this is the one. This is the one that matches our notes. Right? So what we're going to do is we're going to recreate the table from the notes, but with a spreadsheet program. And the instructions are right here in terms of what you have to get done. Okay, so we're going to log into our Google accounts and we're going to make a copy. Again, this is if it's an assignment for you. If it's not an assignment, you can kind of skip over this part and just watch. But if it is an assignment for you, you have to make sure you're logged into your Google account, which if you're in Chrome as your browser, you can tell in the right hand corner because it should, you should let your mouse hover over that circle. Um, that's a picture of my dogs there. And I can tell that I'm in my Google account. Now, this document is not something you own. The spreadsheet that is here is my spreadsheet as a matter of fact. So you want to make a copy of it. So you want to go to file and make a copy or if you don't want to work in Google and you want to work in Excel if you've taken an Excel class it's very similar it's basically the same thing but you could download it as an Excel file. Okay I'm gonna do what almost everybody does which is I'm gonna work in Google. So I'm gonna click file and make a copy now it's okay if it says copy of at the front, but you want to make sure that your last name is here. That has to do with how you're going to submit this as an assignment. So you want to make sure that your last name, so in my case it would be Tucky, you know, in Professor Shepard's case it would be Shepard, <laughs> you know, put your last name right there at the end. That way your instructor knows who's they're looking at. They can find it other ways, but this is just easier. So click make a copy and then I have the spreadsheet. Now you'll notice this is the table that was from section 2.3. That's what we're working with. Okay, so I'm going to close this one because I don't need it and I'm going to leave this up. Now, how to find the midpoints. Okay, so the thing about midpoints is you can't find the first one for the first row because that's an open-ended class. You will find it, but you can't find it from the, from the beginning and you can't find the end for the same reason. So we're just going to find one of these. And we're going to use the same formula we used in the notes, for example, 2a. So if you remember, we wanted equals. Equals lets the spreadsheet program know that we're about to type a formula. And then we want to use parentheses. And we add 40 plus 50, because you add consecutive lower class limits. Close your parentheses, divide by 2. Now that is the only one that you're going to find that way. You're going to use the formula to find one value. So the official formula gets used here. And if you want to see a formula in a spreadsheet program, if you click on the cell, you can see it up here. And if I click in there, it kind of shows back up here. So parentheses 40 plus 50, close parentheses, divide by 2, which is the same formula we used in the notes. Okay, but now we want to use the class width. I'm actually going to type that down here. The class width is the distance from lower class limit to lower class limit, from 40 to 50 to 60 and so on. And we can all see that it's 10, right? We're going up by tens. So we want to use that to be able to find the rest of these midpoints. So you type equals. And then I want to take that cell I just found that value in. So cell B3, column B, row 3. It's like playing Battleship when you were a kid. And you add 10. So equals B3 plus 10, enter. And then you want to click back up on that cell. So 55 is correct, just like what we found in the notes. And then if you go back up and you let your 
your mouse, your cursor hover over to the right. It turns into a plus sign. And then you can click and then hold down your left mouse button and drag it down. And there you go. There's all of them, except for this first one. Ah, oh, but that, of course, was the 45 take away 10, right? It was the first, this value right here, this 45, I add 10 to work down the column. I subtract 10 to find that value. So to find your midpoints, you find one of them with the real formula, with the parentheses and the adding of the lower class limits and dividing by two. Then to find the rest of them, to make it a draggable formula as required by the right, formula dragging, as required by the project, you say equals that cell plus the width, whatever the width is, in our case the width is 10, and then you drag that formula down. And you might have to use it in reverse to find one up on the top row. All right, midpoints are done. Now let's get to something really easy, like the total. So to find the total of all of these numbers, all you have to do is go down to this cell, you can go to any cell you want, but I'm going to go to this one. I'm going to type equals, and it, look, it already knows what I want. Sum C2 to C8. We want to add up, starting at cell C2, all the way down to C8. You can see it's giving it a little orange box, and that's indeed what we want. So I actually hit the tab button, and it filled it in automatically for me, but you could also type it. Sum C2 colon C8, and it finds it. So there's the total, just like we found in the notes. I'm going to make it bold, so because it is different. It's its own thing. All right, now the relative frequencies. So I want to do this with formula dragging. So I'm going to type equals, and I want this cell, C2. That's what these are called, cells, these little boxes. C-E-L-L, -L, cell. <laughs> so C2, I want to divide it by that big total. So I'm going to take 165, enter. So 165 was the big total. Now, Google Spreadsheet is so smart, it actually knows that we want to do that for the whole column. So if you want to take that autofill, it's saying, here's, I will autofill this for you. I will automatically do this if that's what you want. Click Enter to en right, Control Enter to autofill, or you can just hit this little check mark button, and poof, there they are. All of them. Well, that's exciting. But it's a lot of decimal places. Oh, and by the way, you could also just type equals C2 and then drag it down. If you decline accidentally the um, autofill, so if you go here, equals C2 divided by 165. See, there it didn't try to autofill because I declined, I got rid of it. So then I would click and drag and it'll be fine. So if you accidentally decline the autofill, no problems. Now, I don't like all these decimals. We want three decimal places, just like we had in the notes. So if you highlight all of them, so they're all blue, and then you use this button up here, it's got a zero with an arrow and a decimal point. If you see it, it's decreased decimal places. And if you click it, it'll actually lower how many decimal places there are. And you can go to three decimal places, which is what we wanted. If you go too far, you can click the other one to go back. The one with two zeros increases the decimal places, and the ones with one zero decreases. There we go, we've got it. Now, cumulative frequency is a little weird. The first cumulative frequency, if you remember, is five. So I'm just gonna type five, right? It's the same number as this number, right? These two cells are always the same, right? If you wanna type it as a cell reference, that's fine. You can say equals C2 fine. But that autofill is wrong. We don't want that. So we're going to say no, right? That's not what we're looking for. So I, I hit the X. I don't want that. Now, the way cumulative frequencies always work, it's easiest to do E2, which is this cell right above the 5, plus C3, right? E2, which is the 5, plus this 8 over here. If I tell it to do that, That'll be perfect. And I've done this so much that Google's gotten smart and realized this, that's what I want to do. <laughs> that's why it's coming automatically. But you're, you're taking the one above, the cumulative frequency above, plus the new frequency, eight. Enter. And then you click on that 13, which has that formula, E2 plus C3. It's always that, E2 plus C3. And you drag it down. And there they are. You're ending at 165, just like we expect. 
All right, now for the cumulative relative frequencies. Well, the relative frequencies of the cumulative frequencies, right? So all you need to do is the same thing we did for relative frequency. So we type equals E2 divided by 165, enter. And that's perfect. Check mark, right? Or you can click and drag it. You don't need the zero at the bottom. You can just get rid of that. That's a feature of autofilling. And then I want there to be less decimal places. This is too many decimals. So I'm highlighting all of them except the one. I mean, you could do it for the one as well. It doesn't hurt anything. But I'm going to click less decimal places. And there we go. Now I've got three decimal places. And I'm ending at one, just like we know we should from the notes. These were all done with draggable formulas. Now, um, this will all work. This is all perfect. Everything's good. We've got everything done that we need to get done. We found the midpoints, the totals of the frequency columns, the relative frequency. We found it all with formulas and formula dragging. All we have to do now is highlight the frequencies and insert a chart. So this wasn't in the notes, but it'll be good to know for, for later. Um, so you just highlight the frequencies, but don't get the total, just the frequencies. You could just do the numbers or you can get the title at the top. That either way is fine. But do not include the 165 in that blue box that you're highlighting. And you click Insert, Chart. And poof, there it is. <laughs> and then you got to move it. You got to shove it because it can't block your table. So you got to kind of shove it down or shove it over to the right. One way or another, it has to, you have to be able to, your instructor has to be able to see your entire um, sheet without that table or without this chart blocking it. They can scroll down, but if it blocks it, then they can't see everything. And then you're good to go. Right? This is it. This is all done. Now, if you were not doing this as a project, you're finished. You don't have to watch anymore. If you are doing it as a project, I've made it so that you can upload it as a URL. Right? So all you do is go to File, Share, Share with Others, or you can do that um, up here up here in the share link where it says share on the top right corner and you have to change it so instead of restricted it says anyone with the link is a viewer and then say copy the link and then go to your canvas and you would upload that link um, if I go to student view you can see that uploading a URL is an option so you would go to the it's going to give me a grief, but you would go to where it allows you. To <laughs> right now it's being annoying um, because I've never used student view on this before. There it is. <laughs> now it's okay. So it'd be this submission type website URL and you just paste that link in and up and click submit down here after it shows up and you're done. All right. I hope that helps with this particular project and or learning how to use the spreadsheet to fill out those tables for us rather than us having to do it by hand. It's way easier on a spreadsheet program.